Welcome everybody to Be an Innovator with Flow. I am Rebecca Sarr and I am super excited to have you join us to amp up your awesome admin superpowers by delivering innovation with Flow Builder. All right, so we are kicking off a six part video series where we will go step by step to build an automated business process from start to finish. So watch each video, share your progress online and get a chance to win some fun prizes. All right, so for this adventure, we are going to be building a flow to help our users at Sunshine Chocolates better manage and get feedback on projects. This will help them improve their project management and thus um, continue to have really happy and loyal customers for, at Sunshine Chocolates. So follow along and build this exact same flow that we are building or take these learnings and apply them to some unique situations that you are looking to automate, um, whether it's at your company or personally. All right, so for day one, we are gonna take the very first step, and that is to identify the problem. And I'm super excited to hear from Principal Admin Evangelist, Leanne Rimmel, and Senior Admin Evangelist, Mark Baseman, about how we can really take our time to understand what the problem is, understand what the current business process is that is in place so that we can gather all the right requirements and really make sure we have what we need to build something successful in Salesforce. All right, so let's go hear from them. Thanks, Rebecca, and welcome, awesome admins. We're so excited to be with you over the next six videos where we go through and build an awesome flow in our environments and deliver great automation and solve problems for our users. My name is Leanne Rimmel. I'm an admin evangelist here at Salesforce. And I'm Mark Baseman. I'm also an admin evangelist here at Salesforce. So we're super excited that you're here and we're gonna get started by talking through how we decide what flows to build, how we decide what automation to build. And this is applicable for anything you're gonna build in Salesforce because the very first thing we wanna do is identify the problem, right? So why do we do this, Mark? Well, we do it mostly because we don't want to just transfer our existing process into Salesforce without thinking through what the exact problem is and understanding in business process terms what it is that we're going to do. So it's right. super critical to make sure that you understand the process first. So in order to get started on the flow we're going to eventually build, and I promise we are going to get hands on with building flow with the new flow builder, which is so fun. The first thing we're gonna do is talk about what is the problem we are trying to solve. Now, in our demo environment, and our scenario we're talking through in these videos, we're going to be talking about a company called Sunshine Chocolates. Delicious. It's our favorite demo candy company. And we're gonna be talking through all of the steps to build this flow, including today's steps, um, based on what Sunshine Chocolate needs. Now, you can follow along step-by-step -step with us in solving this problem for Sunshine Chocolates, or those of you out there that have business problems you would like to solve in your companies can follow along and apply your own steps, your own business problems, your own business processes, and build in your developer environments or build in your sandboxes. So you have those options in front of you to follow along step-by-step -step with us, or to also build out your requirements and your flow for your own unique business case. No matter what, you're gonna learn a lot and we're gonna have a great time building flows. So the problem that we're trying to solve for our company, Sunshine Chocolates, is that they need to gather project feedback. They have a problem with not having enough visibility into the status of projects in their company. So this is a problem that they have today, it's a problem we wanna solve, and we've identified it for Sunshine Chocolates, which is they're doing they're, they've got projects they do for their customers. They want to gather project feedback in a more thoughtful way. And the problem that's ar arisen is that they can't see the project feedback. They don't know what, what projects have project feedback and they're not actively seeking project feedback in the right ways. So that's our problem. Now we're gonna go through and gather our requirements because once we've identified the problem for any business, then we go through the steps of gathering requirements. So Mark, what is the first thing we do when we're gonna start gathering requirements? So the very first thing we're gonna do is identify our key stakeholders. And stakeholders are just a fancy word for people who have some sort of vested interest in the process or are affected downstream in the process. So these are folks like, could be an executive or could be uh, hands-on users. Ultimately, these key stakeholders are people that will be affected directly or indirectly by this process. 
awesome. So it's super important to start with this. We have to know who our stakeholders are, as Mark was saying, because they have a vested interest in the process and they're also gonna be where we understand what the process should be. And by the way, when I say process, I'm referring in this scenario to a business process, not to not process, process builder, builder process. So our key stakeholders at Sunshine Chocolates for our demo scenario are our project managers, because of course they wanna know what's going on with their projects. They might be providing project feedback. They need to be able to review project feedback. Also our project leaders. So we need to have that visibility to our leaders in the project organization into the project feedback that's being provided. And we have another persona, another stakeholder that has a vested interest and that's our sales users because projects are part of our kind of customer relationship life cycle at Sunshine Chocolate. So it's really important to our sales users that they can provide project feedback because they're on site with customers often and also that they can view that project feedback. So that's our key stakeholders. Now that we know who we're working with, we wanna go ahead and really choose and describe the business process we're trying to solve for and dive in a little deeper and understand what's happening today. So in order to do that, we have to do discovery, right? And so Mark, you've got some great advice on how as admins, we can understand existing business processes and that helps us form our requirements. Yeah, so the first thing that you should do when describing and understanding your current business process is to really do a deep dive with each of your users. So talking to humans, I know, crazy, right? So we have an acronym here on the administrator and the admin evangelist team called SABWA. It's called Salesforce administration by walking around, but ultimately this means sitting one-on-one -on -one with your users, side by side. This could be in person, could be uh, via a Google Hangout. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, it's about getting uh, your eyes on what your users are doing on a day-to-day -day basis in Salesforce. Salesforce and possibly outside of Salesforce. So really shadowing how they're doing their jobs. So you, you're starting with just talking to humans and, and doing stuff uh, by Sabla. You also want to be asking them questions, right, as they're going through the process. And one of the things that we recommend is using open-ended questions. So this is just a way of asking questions that do not end with yes, no. Hey, does that work for you? Yes. Great, that closes the discussion. So you wanna make sure you're asking open-ended questions like how do you do this or why do you do this? And following on to that, there's another technique called the five whys technique. And the five whys is kind of you keep asking why, like a three-year-old. Um, so it sounds annoying, but actually it can be really, really valuable because you can uncover some hidden insights. And there's all sorts of, uh, there's a great story about how this came to be, this five whys technique about a monument in DC that was kept crumbling and they couldn't understand why it was uh, why the surface of the monument kept crumbling. So they used this five whys technique to understand why is it crumbling? Well, we have to clean it because there's bird droppings on it. Well, why are there birds on it? Well, there's birds that get attracted to the insects. And why are there insects there? Oh, well, there's spiders that are attracted by the lighting. So this five whys technique uncovered, well, the monument is crumbling actually because the lighting was attracting bugs. So they changed the lighting pattern and they were able to solve it. So wow. totally an unexpected result from kind of digging in. Yeah. So. And I, I love that five whys, like thinking about going more layers, you know, into understanding the background of something. And there's actually another, believe it or not, another Merck B at Salesforce. Oh, really? Uh, we, Merck Benioff. I don't know if you, have you heard of him? I no, have. Yeah. I have. Um, but he talks a lot. Our founder and CEO of Salesforce, Mark Benioff, who is, you know, very knowledgeable in the space of technology, talks a lot about the beginner's mindset. Right, so approaching any business process, any scenario with this kind of beginner's mindset, asking why, and I think as an admin, it's so beneficial to learn more about, well, why was this built this way? Why do you send this to the entire distribution list if it's just to have visibility for one person, right? Like there's sometimes you can uncover these right. um, scenarios. So doing that discovery, and that's how we do discovery as admins. Now, the next thing that we do, as we, and we do this as we learn through discovery, is we document and we identify kind of the legacy process, the today process. So how are we doing things today? Right. And so this is important so we can understand, you know, what are the steps that everyone is, is taking today and you're uncovering a lot of those whys in the scenario, right. right, as you... And one of the things that when you understand how to do it today, when you're thinking about optimizing the process, there will obviously be like process hot points or optimization points that as you're discovering those steps, like you can find out, mm -hmm. hey, there might be an opportunity for improvement here, reducing steps, removing steps, adding automation, adding logic to prevent uh, wrong data entry. Mm -hmm. So you as the kind of process person and looking at this, you're looking for ways to improve things, not just to map what's existing into Salesforce as is. Absolutely. 
So our process today for our demo environment, what we've identified at Sunshine Chocolates is that the way project feedback is gathered is kind of all over the place. Um, it's not necessarily, it's not sought, right? There's not a process by which people are like formally always introducing project feedback for every project on a timeline. It kind of happens ad hoc. And this is something that we see a lot just with many companies and many different types of business processes. Um, it comes through like email. It might come through people adding notes onto like a project document. A random Google sheet. A random Google sheet, adding comments in different places. So that's sort of where we've uncovered this need is because there is, uh, it's happening, this project feedback process is happening in places, but it's not consistent, it's not automated, it's not reportable. So it's kind of happening in all of our existing systems. It might happen when someone walks by your desk and tells you the status of a project. So we've uncovered that as the today scenario. So once we've uncovered the today scenario for our business process and kind of what we're doing today, and we've done more discovery, then we can start to document our requirements. Right? And so it's important to, to manage scope and to manage your project that you really clearly identify um, what are the requirements Right, Mark? That's right, that's right. So it could be down to, you know, field level, object level, right? What's the data that you're collecting in that instance? Um, but it also might understand, you might need to know what are the individual steps and who's doing them. Mm -hmm. And being able to visualize that in say a flow chart or using some other tools, uh, a whiteboard, it doesn't have to be very fancy. It can just be a list of steps, but ultimately understanding what that kind of desired process is going to be. Mm -hmm. And what it can accomplish, right? So. Um, when we looked at our current use case with Sunshine Chocolates and we said, okay, we've got this project process today, we've got our stakeholders, we asked a lot of good why questions, so our requirements, we're going to boil this down to be pretty simple for this scenario, is we've got a few main requirements, right? We need our new project feedback process to be something that's visible to everybody who works with a project, right? So we need it to be something that's kind of surfaced and visible and very accessible to anyone who's engaging with a project. Um, we also need it to be reportable, right? So one of the pains that we uncovered with our kind of business problem is that we didn't have a lot of visibility, like top level visibility into uh, maybe projects that were getting poor feedback and needed attention or projects that were getting great feedback and what did we do there? How do we repeat that, right? And so we didn't have a lot of, you know, kind of historical information or information being bubbled up around um, that reporting and data of uh, aggregating all that feedback information in one place. And the third is that we want to be able to continue to add business logic to this process, right? And we want this to be, we want, as we think about gathering project feedback, we want to be doing it in a way that permits us to, in the future, apply like maybe more business logic, maybe escalation processes, things like that um, to it. So those are kind of our top level requirements that we identified for our Sunshine Chocolates uh, demo environment. And I feel like we're good on our requirements. We've talked through how we would gather those requirements. Now, in order to follow along with us, let's jump into our demo environment so that I can show you the objects we're gonna be working with and you can build click by click with us that project and project feedback object we're going to build. Or this is where you can start to think about what are the objects that you're gonna build uh, your automation for, that you're gonna solve a problem for with Flow um, in your developer environment or in your sandbox. So let's take a look. So we're here in our Sunshine Chocolates org and we're gonna use the object manager create object to build our project object. We're gonna keep this really lightweight for now. Um, we're gonna call it project, plurals projects. We'll have a text name. We do wanna allow reports and we are going to go ahead and also create a tab. Now, once I've picked my icon and I've created my tab, then I'm gonna create my child object. So let's go ahead and go through, add this tab. Awesome. Now I'm going to go back later and add more fields and more depth to this project object, but I just want to make sure we're highlighting those specific items we're working with for this exercise. So now we're creating a second object called project feedback, and we'll name this an auto number um, and just select an auto number format. Great. And of course we want this to be available for reports as well, and we'll save this. So now in our new project feedback, feedback object, I'm gonna add some fields. First, I'm gonna create that master detail relationship with project. And this is where if you are going to create something um, different than our project and project feedback model, um, you would be thinking about what are those fields that you want to have added um, and available for your users. So now we're gonna add a new field to our project feedback item. We're gonna call this details, make it a text field, Great, and we're gonna add that to the layout. Now we're gonna add two more fields. We're going to select a checkbox here and we'll call this needs escalation. 
Now, whichever fields you're creating in your own examples and use cases, just make sure that you jot them down or remember exactly what fields you're collecting and what fields you want your users to um, be able to populate. So the next one is a pick list for rating. We're gonna enter our own values, one, two, three, four, five. So we've got our project feedback object, which is gonna be the primary object we're working with. And it has four fields. We've got details, a checkbox, a pick list, and then that master detail relationship, that lookup field. Let's go ahead and jump into our project tab and just test it out really fast. We're gonna create a new project. We'll just call this new project. Um, again, I'm gonna go back and add more fields later, but the important part is this project feedback object. So I can see those four fields that I created and I'm going to be ready to build my automation around these two objects. So I hope you enjoy building that out on your own um, or go ahead and just build any objects that you'd like to work with or any fields you'd like to work with in your developer or sandbox environments. And in the next video, we'll be spending more time on how to document out that desired process flow. So that's all for video one and back to you, Rebecca. Wow, that was awesome. Thank you, Mark and Leanne. I learned so much about identifying the problem and gathering those requirements that we need to start building our automated process. Just to summarize, my main takeaways were, one, talk to your users and really understand their needs. Keep questioning them and asking why. And then, of course, identify who those key stakeholders are that we need to involve in each step as we build out this automated process. Um, and lastly, take the time to define the requirements and document them and really understand what it is that we are going to build. All right, now it's your turn. Take a look at the requirements worksheet and fill out the answers for yourself. You can find a link to the um, worksheet in the Be an Innovator with Flow Trail Mix. And of course, we want you to share this on Twitter using hashtag Be an Innovator. In order to enter the sweepstakes, all entries for video one must be completed and tweeted to us by midnight at 12 a.m. Pacific time on April 21st. Restrictions apply, so do see the rules for details. And then join us for video two of Being Innovator with Flow to learn how to define the business process from start to finish so we can be ready to build. See you next time. Awesome, man.